Well, Mikel, uh, an Arsenal performance that improved as it went on, but in the end, did the torrid start to the game cost you? Absolutely. Um, the way we conceded the first goal obviously put you in a really difficult situation after one or two minutes in the game. To concede against them, it's, um, it's tough because um, it puts the game exactly where they want it and even more with the formation and the play that they use with a false nine where they are really comfortable, they want to drag you out um, to start to jump on them and create the spaces and when we are one nil down to, you have to start to do that but I think after the, the team reacted really really well, we were on top of the game, um, we started to generate chances, to start generate momentum in the opponent half but um, we like the quality there when we got in those situations to, to score a goal. That slow start, do you put that down to you getting off to a slow start or is that City being excellent? Uh, we got something wrong, we talked about something and we didn't uh, do it in the first five or ten minutes and then they used uh, that overload in, in one of the sides and, um, and still, it's a cross from Mare, you know where it's coming and Sterling cannot head that ball in the middle of the goal. A player of that size shouldn't be getting up and scoring ahead of well, that. It's clever, really good execution for him, but uh, if you want to win against them, you cannot concede a goal. You said we got something wrong. Can you tell yeah. us what that something it was? It was a tactical thing that um, we prepared and uh, we were unable to read it in the game and, and that caused you because then you are disorganised every time you want to be aggressive in your high press. Why did you grow into the match? What changed? What got you into it? Because the moment we clicked it and we knew and we did what we started to and we prepared, uh, they found it difficult to beat uh, that and then we got momentum, we got confident because things were going, I think we were really good on the ball as well against the pressing and, and we could find um, really good spaces but when we were there at the end around the box uh, in the final set we lacked just picking the right pass to score the goal. Not sure if you looked at your post-match analysis, yeah. you uh, described the conceding of the goal in a very similar way. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, you get people like Rob Holding, I'm sure he's, he's somebody that you, you do need that number nine to, to, to kind of get your, your, your lines and what, what's he going to do, is the forward going to come in? And you've got to be tighter on people, especially in the, the first couple of minutes of a game like that with City, you know, because like we've seen, they've scored that one goal and in the end, that's the goal what's cost us. And um, it, was, it all could have been avoided. Uh, they go to uh, Athens, actually, to play their home uh, leg, second leg of the Europa League. 1-1 with Benfica finally poised to get into the last 16. Apart from that, it is just the Premier League. Um, where are Arsenal at the moment? In 10th, not looking like challenging for the top four. How difficult is that to deal with mentally? It is. It's a, it's a building process, isn't it, Arsenal? They have not been really challenging the, the, the top end of the table for, for quite some time now. So I think it's a building process. I think Arteta will get given plenty of time um, because I think that's what they need now. It's, they've chopped and changed a couple of managers since Arsene Wenger. Uh, now I think it's time to, to you know, pin your, pin your colours to the mast in, in many ways. And I think they're going to do that with Arteta. Now it's going to take a little bit of time to, to, uh, to get his ideas across. A few transfer windows, things like that. But for the immediate future, I think top four is going to be a, a bit of a stretch. Mm. I should just point out that they're only six points behind Liverpool. Yeah. Just for <laughs> editorial reasons. Yeah, which you should do as well. It's a okay. good point out as well. But um, I think that um, Arsenal will definitely... When you look a couple of months back, Arsenal were 15th. People were really worried about what was going on with Arsenal. And obviously, um, Saka, the emergence of Saka, Emil Smith-Rowe. Um, and then, you know, the defensive work that he's done on that team has been brilliant. Because when he came in, it needed doing. There's so much work needed to be done there. So the defensive work, I think, is something that he's put into place there. Arsenal are up there in respects of their defensive record at the moment. But again, it's going to come down to the creativity, the confidence. And like he said, they found a little bit of confidence in the game, but the last pass and the final, the final ball wasn't good enough. But, you know, I think that's a good, um, a good barometer to, to, to look to, like, gauge yourself by against the City side. So I won't think it's too disastrous. OK, talking of records, let's get the post-match thoughts of the Manchester City boss, Pep Guardiola. Well, Pep, it was a match that perhaps got harder as it went on. But firstly, what did you make of the way your team began the game? Well, it was harder like we expect would be. So we won 1-0 at home, we suffered a lot. They make a mental man our build-up. It's not easy, our long balls, okay? we're not the strongest teams to keep that balls. And, uh, and after they follow in the middle, they equalise in the middle with uh, four or five players. So it's difficult to play against, against Arsenal and Mikel. is so difficult, but uh, that's why I give incredible credit for this victory. So at the end, it's Arsenal away, it's Emirates. So we get what to expect. They're going to come here and win. And, and we need. We need in that moment to win this type of game. The people think, 
uh, 30 games in a row, 18 victories in a row, and looks easy. This is so difficult. Look in Europe, in Spain, in Germany, in Italy, all the teams draw points, and this consistency in the last month is, honestly, I didn't expect because I'm really surprised, more than grateful for these players, what they are doing. But winning that period, these games 1 0, that is what we need to realise, and everything is so difficult. How pleased were you with the dominance in the early part of the match? Maybe yeah, the, first was half the, an hour. the last 10 15 minutes was brilliant. It was wow, how good we are playing. Every, every action was simple, every action was. was uh, was uh, we, we didn't push the action, we didn't anticipate the action. The action came along through the passes, through the movements in the right tempo. But after that, the last 20, 25, maybe 30 minutes, they were better than us in the first half. In the half time, we just our pressing with Leno and we, we, we won a lot of balls in that tempo. In the first half, we could not, in the special left side, we sack a tyranny. You know, my young created the three game two in this area and we could not control it. The second half was better. And uh, yeah, we don't create chances, but an, an off enough to, to win the game. You spoke about it before the game. Is that a case of Mikel Arteta knowing you well? No, no, no. Mikel knows everything. <laughs> He's knowing me. He's so good. I'm, I'm, it's not because he's my friend or because today I, I beat him. Uh, I know him where we live. I know what he planned. I know what he works. He's so clever. So he's already one of the I learned a lot watching his teams and uh, today I learned something I can use it in the future so it's not not because we were together and know me he knows everything about football well played you won it on the back really of an electrifying start what was the key to that start uh, I think we you know we, we moved the ball well uh, Riyad was really aggressive in the first five minutes um, yeah we kept the pressure on um, and we got the, the goal early on um, they're, they're a good team, you can see how they've been on the Mikel, they play some good football and you can see that we struggled at times with that, but we, we kept our composure, <laughs> <laughs> kept our composure and, and grinded the result out. You got a goal in the second minute, you could actually have scored before that and just after, it could have been a hat-trick in five minutes, couldn't it? I could have scored before that. Was it, there was a little chance before that, a little swing of the boot before that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Miska, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the one I should have tucked away was the one when Kevin played me through. I've sat the guy down and, um, you know, hesitated a little bit, but... Oh, happy to get the win, yeah. Gary Neville was very complimentary about the leap for your goal. Some effort that to get up above two centre halves was that the key to it? The early yeah. leap. I'm five foot seven and a half. We kept our composure, <laughs> <laughs> kept our composure, and, and grinded the result out. You got a goal in the second minute. You could actually have scored before that, and just after. It could have been a hat trick in five minutes, couldn't it? I could have scored before that. There was a, there was a little chance before that, a little swing of the boot before that. Oh yeah, 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 Miska. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the one I should have tucked away was the one when Kevin played me through. I've sat the guy down and, um, you know, hesitated a little bit, but I'm oh, happy to get the win in the end. Gary Neville was very complimentary about the leap for your goal. Some effort that to get up above two centre-halves, was that the key to it, the early yeah. leap? I'm five foot seven and a half and, you know, got up really well there. Uh, now I'm really happy every time I score a headed goal, it's an uh, uh, extra buzz, but, yeah, I'm happy with that one. You're on a little run of headers, aren't you? You're on a run of headers. There was one yeah. of and this one was a bit further out. Yeah, this one was a bit more, uh, you know, a bit better, a lot better for leap, and, and got really well, and just happy to score. Why did it get harder as it went on? That's how it seemed for him. And you uh, talked in your first answer that was, uh, Arteta's team gave you certain issues. Yeah, as you can tell, like Mikel's worked with us for plenty of years. He knows exactly our strengths and our weaknesses. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, spent a lot of time in trying to find gaps in, in our team, and he made it real difficult for us. Are you getting better as a team, maybe with that centre-half partnership that you've got at digging out results and staying ahead when maybe matches do get harder? Yeah, the two, the two centre-half pairings, they've been, they've been great this season. You know, they have a real great understanding. Um, and even with, when I'm in there as well, you can, you can see that there's a, a, a real unity, a bond in there. And, you know, they're trying to keep this... Um, it's like anything, if I'm, if I'm scoring goals, I try to keep on a run and they're trying to keep clean sheets, so it's a credit to them. And clean sheets, we'll have a look at his goal of the month, is important in that run. 18 wins, 12 of them. And as Michael yeah. said, wasn't associated with them last season. That's the real sea change this season, isn't it? Yeah, and this is why um, I've, I've said, I've got a record saying, I, I do fancy them in the, in the Champions League because of the way they're defending at the moment. And they get out like that as well. They started very fast, you know, but like he said, they, they just kept doing what they do. And you know that they are capable of continuing to create. So he should have had another goal. It could have been a lot easier than it was, but in the end... You know, I think they, they, deserve to, they de deserve to win it on the chances they created. Let's have a look at that start because he said fast. I think that's something of an understatement. 
Yeah, yeah. I think Mikel Arteta would have been quite worried actually after this uh, this first couple of minutes, thinking what could the score be here. But they did well um, after that. Arsenal, I think City were definitely the better team in the first half, and then the second half was a little bit more even. Mares there on his left foot just got to take him down down wide, as as Wrighty said at half time, and then the cross was fantastic. And if you jump early. Um, as a centre forward and he's shown as well as he mentioned there he scored a, a couple of goals with his head in recent years but right here as I say you, you think you yeah, can avoid this I think what it shows as well Mike is that at the start of the game they start, so you have to do these things you have to be tighter on him I think that you've got to kind of try and just kind of stop him from trying to want to make that pass he's got to pick him up and then you let them play in and around here while you're, while you're in like an organised situation in the end it's a great pass out there so once you do get it there Mike I feel that you've got to let him go down there. Give yourself time for maybe someone to come and help you. Let him go down to the right. Um, he's not going to. He doesn't fancy crossing it on his right wing. We don't see Mares do that often. But once he's come back in here, you know, it's it's just a beautiful part. It's a beautiful cross. It's a beautiful cross. When we watch it from here, you can see the confusion. Like I, I mentioned, Rob Holding is looking for someone to make a run into in, inside that space where a centre forward normally would do. Then you see Gilbert, like Gilbert, then you see Bernardo Silva. He's going to give um, Hector Bellerin a problem. And then, like I say with Sterling, he thinks he's going to come round there holding. He doesn't do it in the end. The ball is very good. And in the end, Holding doesn't end up doing anything because he hasn't got a number nine to mark. He's all confused. There's too much movement around him and the ball's fantastic. What about the leap, Michael? Fantastic leap. When it, on the way down, I thought he got that as well, mate. You often see, don't you, with, with a player that's quick, the only reason they're quick is they're, they're, they're powerful. They can generate power. So anyone that's fast has got a good jump as well. That's basically what sprinting is. It's the ability to, to spring, to, to, uh, to, to jump and, and to, to, uh, to push off quickly. So no question about it. He's got a good spring and when he wants to, he can head the ball. Yeah, mm. so as we've said, one goal enough. We talked about that clean sheet record. It's not just the defenders. Who obviously, we've spoken many times this season about Stones and Diaz, etc. They defend from the front. You've, you've picked out how they yeah. do that. Yeah, I have. I think it's in interesting, really, because a lot of people talk about Manchester City when they've got the ball, but to get the ball, you've got to, you, you know, you've got to win it back as well. And I just think that, that the way they press, the way that they're confident about going man-to-man, especially off a, a, an Arsenal goal kick here, and they pick the ball up, they might pick it up in the, in the opponent's half. But what I think is really key is if you're brave enough to go man-to-man, -man, the best teams over the years are, are ones that, that can defend. If you're, if you're, it's a bit like Liverpool at the moment. You know, Liverpool can defend one-on-one -on -one when they've got Van Dijk and go. All of a sudden, the second goal, the penalty that they gave away yesterday is because they can't really trust one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Phillips gets rolled and all of a sudden it's a goal. And I just think that that City are so confident with their players at the back nowadays that they can actually go, right, one for one up there. We're all right, we're yeah. fine, we're as quick as the attackers, we're as strong, we can deal with it's this. Like a village right. Ferdinand. Exactly. All the great teams, right, and you've been involved in some mm. as well, they can defend man-to-man -man all over the place, especially at the back, and then that gives you confidence to go and nick the ball further up the field. Mm. To be honest, it's, um, you just look at them now, and it just look very good. You know, like, like Raheem Sterling mentioned about, you know, they started really well, but maybe because Mikel knows with spaces that they, they're trying to break down off. And, and they kind of, like, just carried on doing what they're doing. And it just looks very, like, ominous now, the way they're playing. They don't look like they're going to get breached. Like I say, Arsenal, three shots, one on target. It didn't look too threatening. But um, it was, for me, I think, a little bit of an opportunity missed in respects of Arsenal having a go at them. You know, there were certain opportunities where the Arsenal did win the ball back, but they didn't get into them quick enough. It wasn't, it wasn't intense enough. And I think that mess, like mixing up that three of Odegaard and Saka and, and, um, and who's the other? Odegaard, Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe, I think they had something going. Just, I thought it would be brilliant to play them in a game like that, see how they get on against that kind of City side. All that does is build confidence, build momentum. In the end, he went with, uh, with Pepe. It didn't work out for me today for Pepe. I didn't think it worked out for Mark Odegaard in there as well, to be honest. But in the end, City was just too good. They were too good to close down spaces, couldn't break them down.